The number one skill to help you make better decisions. One of the most powerful mental practices that you can engage in that expands your mind and exercises your ability to think critically is auditing the reference points by which you make decisions. In other words, auditing the memories by which our decisions are made. See, as humans, each and every one of us overestimates our intelligence and believes that we're rational and logical creatures, but there's undeniable and really overwhelming evidence to support the complete opposite. Most people believe that all of their decisions are made logically, rationally, consciously, and by our own volition, and all the research points the complete opposite direction. Because when you really break it down, logic is based on things like accurate reasoning, evidence, statistics and probabilities. And the truth is that most of the things, right, the stories, the illusions that humans suffer from have nothing to do with those objective measuring tools, but are rather rooted in deeply held beliefs or emotions that are tied to psychological perceptions of safety and danger in our environment. Now, for some, it's self-evident, and for others, it's a pretty hard pill to swallow. Now, in your journey of personal development, there is a point where you come across a set of philosophical thinking strategies that allow you to begin really viewing reality in a deeply objective way, meaning unbiased, emotionally independent, and this applies to all areas of your life. And so, as a result, you move deeply into a state of observation where you're less attached to your identity and you really start to become the witness of your life, where you're less attached to the beliefs and the stories that are contained inside of the memory bank of your mind. This comes from meditation and deep inquiry. And so your personality is just that. It's the memories, the stories, the filters by which information gathered in your five senses is passed through, interpreted, and processed. So auditing our reference points, what does that mean and how does this work? Well, there's four core modalities of understanding that allows us to interpret and construct meaning from these reference points. Language is the first one, and that is the medium by which we use our voice, sound, and tonality to communicate and understand information. Then we have emotions, which create the baseline physical state from which our thoughts, our feelings and decisions are made. Then we have safety and danger, which are the two core fundamental sponsoring criteria by which all decisions are made. And then we have risk and reward, which is the relationship between something hurting us or growing us. So let's explore how these work together to create our present day reality. Now, from the moment we're born, our brain is an entirely blank slate. Now, of course, we all have different DNA and we have different baseline traits and tendencies, but beyond that, our brains are essentially a blank slate, like an open document ready to receive codes and instructions for how to survive in this three-dimensional world. Now, from the day we're born, everything we're receiving in our environment, between language, experiences, memories with our families, friends, school, movies, shows, and everything in between is recorded and perceived through the basic filter of good or bad, safety or dangerous. And understand that this is the extent by which a child and adolescent brain really processes information, and each of these experiences, when tied to and amplified, by an emotion creates a mental snapshot in the brain and that becomes a reference point or consulting memory that the brain actually refers to in present decision making, right? It's like burning your hand on a stove. When that happens to every person for the first time, right? Because there's a high level of pain or danger present, the brain takes a mental snapshot of that experience and knows how to avoid making that same decision in the future because it now links a hot stove to a burning hand or intense pain. But what most people don't realize, however, is that from a macro perspective, life in reality does not produce a statistically consistent experience like a stove does, right? A hundred out of a hundred times, a hot stove is going to burn your hand. But most other things in life, right, like in the areas of business or health or relationships, which at first glance may carry some element of risk and exposure, which would help us grow, they don't carry that same probability, right? Another simple example is like getting bit by a dog at an early age. This traumatic experience is generally enough to cause people to be frightened or at the very least very cautious around most dogs for the rest of their lives. 
Objectively, we can look at that situation and use logical reasoning to define a probability by which a dog is actually harmful and will bite you, and it's probably less than one out of 100. Most of us have come into contact with hundreds of dogs over the course of our life and have never been bit, right? Most dogs are, are friendly and they want to play. Uh, but when that person who's been bit sees a dog and instantly locks up, what's happening is that the brain is performing a psychological process called generalizing, where it applies prior data gathered by the five senses to infer information about a new experience. And so why do we do this? Well, for one, it's because it's automatic, right? This happens in the background without your conscious effort or, or attention. And it happens for what the brain thinks is a good reason. It's a survival pattern that helps us look out for tigers and lions lurking behind trees or bushes. Now, during our evolution, the first thing we begin to acquire, which allows us to understand and process reality in a way that makes sense for us and to be able to survive is language, right? Language directly impacts our perception of reality. For example, phrases like, no, don't do that, you know, be careful, you'll never make it, you know, why are you doing that, um, you know, you aren't good enough. These language patterns um, really go deep and begin creating the construct and, and decision-making patterns of our life, right? Another common one, like, if you don't follow the rules, something bad will happen. For example, a child hears the word no an average of 400 times per day. Even the words good and bad run deep in how we process reality and make decisions, right? Everybody's heard these things to some degree or another, some more than others, and it's this type of language that creates the fundamental reference points by which decisions are made. It's like if you were to go and create a piece of software and you added in 40,000 lines of no and be careful into the code, Right? It's no wonder why you have millions or billions of people who are afraid of trying, stepping outside of their comfort zone, and taking risks. Right? You can think about some deeply held beliefs around money, relationships, politics, religion, health, creativity, or anything else, and often refer back to an early memory of what somebody told you. And so auditing your reference points is critical because once you can begin objectively looking at your past memories, experiences, and deeply held beliefs about reality, you can begin to assess the core of where your decisions are coming from. This is especially important if you find that you have certain patterns of thinking, physiological responses like anxiety or fear, or behavior patterns like addictions, procrastinations, and maybe extreme attractions or aversions to certain things. Things that you might know are stopping you from experiencing more success or fulfillment in your life. And so if you do that audit, you'll find that most of these primary reference points are coming from people like your parents, you know, friends, media, which inherently themselves are also operating also under flawed assumptions. Your parents got it from their parents, and so it goes generally generations deep. Now, it's important to understand that almost everyone's reference points and decision-making process, unless effectively trained, is by nature flawed to some degree. And I'm not saying that you know, people are flawed as individuals. What I mean is that this process is automatic and performed by the brain, which from an evolutionary standpoint is the same as it was 200,000 years ago. And unless you're continually living in a conscious state by which you're auditing and overriding these decision-making patterns for extended periods of time, they will continue to run in a habituated way that will control your life. So here's a practical way to begin auditing your mental reference points so that you can make better decisions. Step one, think of an area in your life where you wanna grow but you feel restricted. Step two is think back to some of the earliest memories you have surrounding that idea, action, or event. And step three is objectively audit that reference point and do your best to intelligently and logically determine whether that snapshot or memory is accurate, valid, true, and begin to critically evaluate and analyze whether there's actual evidence to support that theory. And understand that this takes work, 
right? And nine out of 10 times, it is not an easy process. For many people, in fact, it's incredibly difficult, especially if these beliefs are the supporting pillars that represent deeply held meanings around life, right? Beliefs around money, relationships, politics, religion, right? And they become even more difficult to confront and modify the longer we've been operating by them. Because once our brain creates and internalizes a belief, it'll fight to the very end, sometimes even to its own death, to defend it. Now, for most people, the possibility that they've spent years operating under a specific belief system, idea, or pretense about themselves, other people, or reality as a whole is almost impossible to bear because it directly challenges the very thing that they believe is keeping them alive. So understand that this process takes a true desire to change combined with an incredible amount of objectivity, patience, and openness. It also requires you to be humble in your approach to life. To be truly willing to understand that you don't have all the answers and that you're open and willing to change according to new information. This openness at its core is what's required for collectively for us to continually evolve. And as Albert Einstein famously said, the more that I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. It's only when we're open and willing to step outside of our ego, our attachment to our identity, that we create space for ourselves to begin massaging and retooling the automatic mechanisms i.e. our brain and our physiological responses to create and experience intellectual and spiritual growth. And so if you're an entrepreneur or sales professional who's ambitious and is looking for a proven path and system to predictably level up your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical operating system so you can make more money, create more impact, and experience more fulfillment in your life, then I'd like to invite you to book a call with us here at Wake Up Wealthy where we've helped over 400 men predictably scale to the multiple six and seven figure level by creating profound shifts in their identity, which translates to massive execution and results in life and business. The work we do with men inside of Wake Up Wealthy is unlike any type of traditional life or business coaching because what makes Wake Up Wealthy unique is that it ties everything together first through the lens of neuroscience and psychology while combining powerful synergies like group accountability, personalized business coaching, and raw execution to help men like you predictably master their mind, body, spirit, and business. Now, if you got value from this video, I'd love for you to share this with someone and spread the message. The decisions each of us makes matters and our ability to make better decisions individually will collectively create a better world for us and those who come after us.